And I've done, I've done had two confirmations this morning. And I know it may seem a little long. And, and uh, I would like to uh, verbally apologize. But it's one of those sorry, not sorry type deals. And so I understand if some of you may, may need to uh, be dismissed. We completely understand such. But, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time doing a lot less for a lot less purpose. And uh, so if you just bear with me, I, I do promise that I will be swift. Is that okay with everybody? Don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what the, tr- the, the reality. Acts chapter 2. I got one verse. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 15. And we will receive an offering for the Gideon International as we dismiss. Once again, you have the liberty to dis- be dismissed at any time that you need to go. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 15. 15. When you get there, if you would, please so kindly stand for the reading of God's Word. Acts chapter number 2 and verse 15. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, sin it is but the third hour of the day. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is the most powerful instrument, the most able to save our engrafted souls. It's able to heal the sick, deliver the oppressed. And Lord God, your word is more, it is, is sharper than any two-edged sword. And Father, as your word has went forth, we've seen the power and the testimonies. We all have the testimony of how the word of God has changed our life. And now, Father, as your word has went forth this morning, we believe and are in confidence by faith that it will accomplish the mission set before this morning in Jesus' name. And the church said, you may be seated. As I say, I will move quick and we may have to revisit this, but I, I got to lay this groundwork this morning. When I, as a young, uh, young teenager, my first encounter with drunkenness was on rock gut liquor and cheap wine. But in that moment, I became addicted to alcohol. And there for many years, I was what the Bible calls a drunkard. And God supernaturally set me free in in September of 1993. I didn't go through no 12 steps. I didn't have to go to no uh, counseling. I didn't have to go to no uh, rehab. And and I'm not knocking those things. Please don't misunderstand me. But I know the, the power of God's Word to set one free from anything that's got them bound. And in in the early, or in 1920, this country amended a, 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 an amendment to the Constitution And it banned the sale and production of alcohol. Known as the prohibition. And then as a result of prohibition, many people began to make their own liquor. It was commonly known as bathtub gin or bathtub wine. And I want to say to you today, I'm afraid that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has went into prohibition. We have forbidden the move of God. We have forbidden the the, the the alcohol or the new wine, if you will, in the spirit. And we've come up with our own bathtub gin. We come up with plots and schemes and how to get people to move and, and, and flow in the things of God. We see a lot of things. Once again, as, as most of you know this morning, we, we are of the Pentecostal persuasion. But much of what I've seen in the Pentecostals realm is no more than man using bathtub gin to try to muster up a move of God. We, we get all excited when we see people in the floor, but I'm more excited when they get up. Uh, see, I was down in the pit, and I wasn't so excited when I was down, but bless God, I got excited when I got up. I'm not excited when I see people laying in the floor and never get up and do nothing. When you get in the floor and God gets you up, you'll do something. Oh, I'm not drunk as you suppose, but I am drunk on that which is God has given me, and therefore many 
many today have become no more than making bathtub gin, bathtub liquor, and trying to make a move of God. That's why your churches are dead. That's why nobody's being born again. That's why the sick are not being healed. That's why they come in possessed with devils and leave possessed with devils because we are sipping on bathtub gin, which is not doing nothing, producing a bunch of sick, weak drunkards in the spiritual realm. I'm going to go fast, I promise you. Everybody is under the influence of something. And bless God, if you and I are ever going to be charged with anything, we should be charged with living under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Much of the church world is under the influence. Many in this room today, you're under the influence of everything but the Spirit of the living God. You're under the influence of social media, under the influence of popular opinion, under the influence of what your friends say, under the influence of false doctrines and false religion. But I'm telling you today, God is calling His people to get under the influence of the Holy Ghost, get drunk on this new wine. Oh, I'm not talking about running around the church. And but hey, listen, I, you everybody knows me well enough to know when it's a genuine move of God, I'll run with you. When it's a genuine move of God, I'll dance with you. When it's a genuine move of God, I'll get right in there and I'll miss with you. But much of the people are just mustering things, trying to make a move of God to say, oh, we had church. When you had nothing, when you have church, when the Spirit of God moves, people get changed. I've seen people prostrate in the floor and get up and not a bit of nickels worth of difference in their life. I've seen people talk in tongues and live like hell. Amen or oh me. Speak in tongues and gossip out of the sin. Brother, these things ought not be. That's what James said. You are on the influence of something today. And you should be under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Under the influence of the Word of God. Here are these men and women. The Bible says there was about 120 in this upper room. And they were there and they waited and they prayed and they tarried like Jesus had commanded them. The sad fact of the matter is he told 500, go wait in Jerusalem. And the Bible says only about 120 showed up. But those hundred of those about 120 were faithful and they prayed and they fasted and they continued in one accord. And the Bible says a sound. Suddenly there was a sound as of a mighty rushing wind came in and it filled the house. Oh, we need our houses full, not full of people. That's good. Not full of excellent worship and praise, which is good. But we need our churches full of the Holy Holy Ghost of God. Church is normal. Will not work in these last days. You'll be chewed up and spit out by the world. Then you will be deceived. Jesus gave the word warning. Be were, be careful, for many deceivers have gone out into the world. You are under the influence of someone today. Or something. I hope that you're under the influence of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 2, we continue on this, and we'll go back a few verses in chapter, verse 6, 8, 8, and then verse 11. Now, when it was noised abroad that the multitude came together, and they were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. And they are all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these which speak Galileans? And now we hear every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born. Verse 11, what is it they heard? We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Those that are under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Uh, let me tell you something. Just like it was when I was on the natural liquor. Just like it was when I was a drunk. My speech would change. Uh, it would get slurred. And I, and in Proverbs 22, see, you can easily tell who's on the natural world's influence. Or who's in the influence of the Holy Ghost. In Proverbs 23, it says, Those that tarry long at the wine will speak perverse things. But those that are sipping and those that are intoxicated and those that are under the influence of the Holy Ghost of God, they will speak the wonderful 
works of God. See, I'm telling you folks, uh, uh, James made it very clear. You can't bless God and curse man with the same tongue. Uh, you, you can't get sweet water and bitter water out of the same spring. Um, you can't get olive berries from an apple tree. Uh, you, you got to, I'm telling you, those that are under the influence of the Holy Ghost, your speech will change. You won't talk like you used to. You won't gossip like you used to. You, your speech will change and you'll talk only of the wonderful works of God. There is too many church people, too many that profess to be Christians. And their speech is this, it's just like that of the Galileans. They're, they're identified with their own life. They talk about their own life. They sound just like... I'm going to tell you something. No change equals no Jesus. If there's never been a change in your life, if there's never been a change in your speech, if there's never been a change in your attitude, then, friend, you've never been born again. Oh, you might be backslidden this morning, but I'm telling you, you can't tell me that you've encountered Jesus and not change. These men spoke the wonderful works of God. Now I understand, they were there, they were endowed by the Holy Ghost, and they spoke in unknown tongues. They spoke in a tongue that was known to the hearers, in a gift that they didn't have. They were speaking languages that they were not taught. Thank God that God's not changed. Thank God that He still endues men. I prayed with a man in jail one time. Of this, uh, he, he was from... I'm assuming uh, Mexico. I don't sp I speak a little Spanish now, but I spoke zero then. The only thing I knew then was no hablo espanol. But I'll tell you this. God came upon me, and I began to minister to that man. I don't know what I said to that man, but God did something in that man. And hey, I'm telling you right now, God is able to get His Word through people in any tongue, in any language, even if you don't know the language. The wonderful works of God. And I don't know, like I say to this day, what was said to that man and what that man heard, but I know something. You just, hey, me gibberish didn't cause that man to cry. Gibberish didn't cause that man's heart to be changed. When you are influenced, under the influence of the Holy Ghost, you will speak of the wonderful works of God. Too many talking about the works of this, uh, works of this, and works of that. See, many people today, they're under the influence of, of their political party. I, I, listen, I'm a Christian before I'm an American. I'm an, I'm an American before I'm a Republican or a Democrat. You hear what I'm saying? And many people's influence comes from Fox News, CNN News. I'm telling you, our influence should come from the Word of God. This God, Holy Ghost, breathe. Too many people are getting their influences from everything but the Word of God. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. Your speech will change. And others were mocking these men who are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judah, all you that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known unto you this day, and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, sin is but the third hour of the day. It's another clear sign, those who are under the influence of the Spirit of God, who are under the influence of this new wine, they will stand up with a brother. You, you, you. I get so sick and tired of hearing what everybody putting down their brothers and sisters from other churches and other persuasion. Give me a break. If God saved them, I don't care if they got to beg to get saved. I don't care if they got to stand on their hands to get saved. I don't care if they, hey, if they're your brothers and sisters in Christ, you'll stand up while yet these men were mocking them and saying these are drunk. Peter stood up with the eleven. Thank God when I was in the world, I would stand up with my running buddies. You didn't talk about one of them when we were all drunk. You didn't had a fight on your hands. But if you're under the influence of the Holy Ghost, you'll stand up with your brother. You ain't going to let nobody talk about them. You ain't. Now listen, sin is sin. And if there's sin in their life, we need to address the sin. But quit talking about it. The Bible gives a cure to do that in Matthew 18. Those that are fallen, you go to them. If they don't receive you, then take a brother with you. If they don't receive you, then you bring them before the church. But we don't even do that. We just talk about them behind their back. You know I'm telling you the truth. But we are the influence. You'll come to their aid. You'll come to their defense. 
when men and when, when godly men and godly women fall, and it can happen. And unfortunately it does happen. And don't you better straighten your halos up this morning because it can happen to you. You compromise the truth, you compromise the place, you compromise the time, the next thing you know, you'll be the one falling. It's been said many times that we're the only people that, that kill our wounded or kick them when they're down. You ain't, you ain't under the influence of the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God is all about restoration. Who has given us the Spirit of reconciliation. And to those that are being influenced by the Spirit of God, they will reconcile those that have fallen from the grace of God. One of the saddest scriptures I've ever read in, 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 in this Bible, and there's some that are heart-wrenching. Paul. And, I, and I've come to learn that my mouth is... Uh, you know, my flesh tells me my, I need to calm down my mouth. Because a lot of times when I speak the truth, it is an offense to many people. And many people will run from the truth. They tell you they want truth until you give it to them. And Paul, a man who has literally laid down his life for mankind and to serve Jesus. No telling how many people were born again under his ministry. Untold. People healed. People delivered. Churches planted under his ministry. And one of the saddest verses I've ever read in Scripture is found when he's writing a second letter to Timothy in chapter 4 and verse 16. And Paul says this to the Timothy. He says, At first, at my first answer, no man stood with me. How sad is that? Have you ever felt alone? Now many people, they choose to be alone. They put themselves in a position to want to be alone. And I'm telling you, where were all the, where were all the wine sippers and the, and the tongue talking? and the, all, Where were they all at? When Paul was there in a low state of his life, he was there by himself. See, our minds need to be rewired by the Spirit of God because we, we, we think this is the assembly. This is the assembly that we're not to forsake. But we should be in communion and standing by and encouraging and praying and lifting one another up every day of the week. And I can see that many, many times we would get annoyed by the even fact that we request prayer. Straighten your halos up. You know I'm telling you the truth. You ain't sipping. You're under the influence. I don't have time. I, I got to do this. So those that, are, those that are influenced under this new wine, your speech will change and you will stand with the brethren. The scripture says, remember those that are in bonds if you're in bonds with them. I'm just going to ask you, and I'm going to look in the mirror and ask myself, when was the last time you prayed for the persecuted church? I know, you know, and I didn't take these flags down. Before, I did it for a reason. It was just time for a change. But I know when, when I put up these flags, many people got offended. I put those flags there for one reason. So it, when I look at those flags, I'd say, I need to pray for that country. I need to pray for the people in Jerusalem. I need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I need to pray for those in El Salvador. I need to pray for those in Mexico. I need to pray for those in Guatemala. I need to pray for those in China. I'm telling you, there's a reason that we should do things, not just to be doing things. But many times people don't see the bigger picture. They see us four and no more. They see our local assembly. And they forget there's brothers and sisters throughout the world who are suffering, and they, many of them are standing alone. And you and I, may we not be able to physically stand arm in arm with them, but we can cover them in prayer. We can pray for them. We can do just like this brother asking us to do this morning. We can give to the work of the ministry. We can give to the work of the ministry. And if you don't believe in the getting national, don't give. But find something to give to. Because there's always something greater than yourself. There's always something greater that's going on to what you can see in the immediate moment of your life. Why is it so important? And I, I'm not going to get into this message. I, I'm going to preach at some point in time. I, if, if, listen, I, I don't, I'll never, this will be the first time you've ever heard me say this. But if you get a chance, you, especially if you've got young kids, go back and watch the Thursday uh, 
what, whatever it's called. I don't, like I say, it's been an offense to people, but I ain't, it's once again, it's the Word of God, and I can't help it. You've got to do what's right. As the day goes on in this moment here, Peter stands up and he get, begins to preach. And he begins to defend these men and he begins to defend this move of God that these, they are seeing. And he says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants and upon my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Why is it important for you to be intoxicated or under the influence of the new wine? Because I'm going to tell you something. As most of you know in the natural, if you grow up in the home of alcoholic parents, you most likely will be an alcoholic. Now, that's not always the case. But a large majority of alcoholics, they become alcoholics because they were influenced or under the influence of their parents. But I tell you this, on the same token in the natural, if you and I grow up under the influence of the Holy Ghost, it will cause our sons and our daughters to want to live a life under the influence. Uh, see, I, I'm totally against drinking alcohol. As I say, when, and I know there's a lot of sipping saints out there today. I know there's a lot of saints. You know how I know there's a lot of sipping saints in the world today? There's a lot of sipping saints in every county you go into now. Because liquor is in every county that you go into. I thank God that Hart County is still dry. But I might tell you why it's a dry county. May I tell you why? One reason. For the biggest part, it ain't the churches. Because there's Christians in every county that's ever got into. And if everybody that was a Christian actually went out and voted, they would never pass nowhere. But many of the Christians are the ones going in and voting. Oh, we to help our taxes. Wait a minute. Did you forget who God was? He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. You can't bring in lawlessness and wickedness and expect God to bless it. But you want to know why it's not in Hart County today? Oh, not because it's been not been tried. Oh, no. It's not here because we have the third largest Amish settlement in, the, in America. And they are totally... Oh, there's probably some that drink alcohol. There's probably drunkard Amish. But as a whole... They are totally against alcohol. But if it wasn't for the Amish community that was brought in, we'd be looking at it today when you go to El Mazalon. You'd be looking at it when you went to Pizza Hut today. You take your kids in there and they see that. But moms and dads, if they see you grow up under the influence of the Holy Ghost, drinking on the new wine, of the spiritual wine, they'll have them a hunger. They'll have a craving. And the Bible will come to pass that your sons and daughters shall prophesy. I prayed that over my kids. I spoke that over my kids. I'm still praying it. I'm still speaking it. And bless God one day. See, I, I, I might have not did the rest right thing when they were younger. But bless God, we can pick up where you left off. You can pick up right where you are today and start doing right. Raising sons and daughters that are addicted to the new wine. Oh, I encourage underage drinking when it comes to the new wine. I say start them early. Don't wait till they get to the point to where they don't have a, want a thing to do with God. But start them early. I can remember, you know, when it was acceptable when I was younger to put a little alcohol in the baby bottle. I can remember sitting around and my grandfather let me sip on Pap's Blue Ribbon beer. I say, let's get them sipping on the new wine right now. Matter of fact, I say, let them get a big old gulp of it. Let them get, in, let them get intoxicated by the Holy Ghost of God. But moms and dads, they're going to have to see it in you. And it's all because of this. Peter goes on and... And, and as he preaches, as his speech was changed, you, you got to remember 40 days ago, this man was cussing. Yeah. 
They said, your speech ber ber betrays you, ber berays you, Peter. We know you're one. And he begins to cuss. And now he's standing up with 11 speaking the wonderful things of God. And the Bible says they were pricked in their hearts. And they said, men and brethren, what must we do? When they see us intoxicated with the Spirit of God, they will be convicted. The Bible says first they were confounded. They couldn't understand. They, they were confused. Oh, I knew what this man was. I knew what this lady was. But now they're speaking the wonderful works of God. They were confounded. And now they're convicted. And now they're confessing. Jesus as the Lord. He said, repent every one of you. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this promise is to you. And here it is again. To your children. You say, Brother, Brother, Brother Kid, you spend a lot of time about kids. Because I wish somebody had spent some time with me when I was a kid. Because I went through a lot of a lot, lot of nonsense I didn't have to go through. I endured a lot of stuff that I didn't have to go through. Now I'm not down to my mom and my, my mom sitting right here. I would never dishonor her. She did the best she could. But rebellion was bound up in my heart. But I needed somebody to sit down and say, Hey, before you get hooked on this, let me introduce you to this. See, you know how I got, you know how I, let, let me tell you something. And I'm going to say this and I'm done. I told you I would be quick this morning. I couldn't remember, is, is, is it played out? I was running around with drunkards. I was running around with guys older than me. Moms and dads, you better know who your kids are hanging out with. You better hear what I'm telling you. You better know who your kids is hanging out with. And they were all drinking. And I, I wasn't drinking. But then, then, then they got me. Dwayne, won't you, won't you, you know, this, this ought to tell you something. Heathens, the speech that we talked about when we was drinking is heathens. Dwayne, won't you knock the devils out of it? You know, that was the pop it on the bottom. Then I got to open it for them. And the next thing I was drinking it for me. I can remember the first time. I can remember it like it happened last night, first time I ever got intoxicated. I throwed my guts up. And I said, God, funny, I cried out to God. God, if you get me through this, I'll never drink again. I lied through my teeth. I'm the first time I read Proverbs 23 when it talks about those that tarry at the wine. I said, oh, my. That was me. Because they said the same thing. I'll never do it again. Or, they, or he says, I can't wait till I can do it again. But I'm telling you, I can't wait. I can't wait. To sip of this new wine. I can't wait to be intoxicated. Oh, there's times that we're literally uh, intoxicated, overpowered by, this, by, this, by His Spirit. But you and I should always be intoxicated by Him. It's important who, you're, who your kids hang around with. Because why? When they see your influence, you'll influence others. And see, my friends, they subtly influenced me to start drinking. Oh, I'm not blaming them. I was the one that took it up and drank it. But I had, if I had not had that influence and had another kind of influence, things might have been different in my life. I don't know, but I only want to hope. But I tell you this, that's, that's the past. But right now, it can be different in your life. And it can be the dot life difference in your children. Your children don't have to go through what you went through. Your children don't have to be raised in the hell that you were raised in. Or the mess that you were raised in. You can break that cycle. And begin to live a life under the influence of the Spirit of God. Because ultimately, after those men and women that came out of that upper room that day... Under the influence of the Holy Ghost, there Peter preached one of the most simplest message. He began to tell them about Jesus, this same Jesus whom you crucified, approved of God. And God, that death couldn't hold him, that death couldn't keep him. And God raised him from the dead. And he preached a simple word of repentance and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
And the Bible goes on to say, he said many more words. We don't know what those were. But as a result of being under the influence of the Spirit of God and preaching that simple message, 3,000 people got saved. Your influence matters. And it matters what's influencing you. Because it's going to come a time, moms and dads, that your children may get up in the middle of the night and say, I want to be saved. You can call me, that's fine. And I'll pray with them. But there should be enough influence in you that you can lead them to Jesus without calling the preacher. Stand with me.